60 seconds countdown, 60 second countdown until our overture to open the program.
currently tuning into the overture of Oliver. Oliver. Such a sprightly, cheerful overture. circuit. So what we just heard is was the overture to Lionel Bart's Oliver. And uh, every every Thursday we as per tradition we open the program with a selection and a an Anna select overture from different masterful pieces of the Broadway stage and musicals. So hope you thoroughly enjoy. And on to our first number, first selection. Speaking of Oliver. I know where 
where I must be. I'll cling on steadfastly as long as he as life is long I love him right or wrong and somehow I'll be strong as long as he needs me <clears throat> if you've been lonely then you will know when someone needs you, you love them so. I won't betray his trust, though people say I must, I've got to stay true. I guess he does need me, aka as long as he needs me, courtesy of the Oliver Libretto. Just a little whistler, be right back. So that particular selection was the debut selection as far as for our our Thursday program so that's a debut for the program and we will also be hearing some reprisals and some encores from the rewound sessions and onward to the next selection If I loved you time and again, I would try to say, oh, I'd want you to
longing to tell you, but afraid and shy, I'd let my golden chances pass me. So another, just such romantic, such a romantic, lovely ballad of what we just heard. If the hypothetical ballad, if I loved you, if I loved you, that that's really that just just always proves how as anti cliched as Frank Lesser, the songwriter, the lyricist, the composer for the entire. Uh, oh, pardon me, Rodgers and Hammerstein, we're actually, we're onward to Frank Lesser, how uh, anti-cliché <laughs> Rodgers and Hammerstein uh, were just as far as uh, really just confessing their love ballads to the audience. Uh, Frank Lesser actually, uh, coincidentally, is also very anti-cliché, just very much of an individualist with uh, how he professed his love tunes as well. So we are going to hear an example of that right now from the forever beloved Guys and Dolls. And actually, the, so I thought I'd present two soliloquies, two ballads, a la, a la acapella, a la capella, for you all. And both are, are sung by a two, two male, well, one, one's more of a principal role than the other, but uh, nonetheless, both are just equally stunning, stunners for ballads, and here we are with the first. Velvet, I can wish you for the collar of your coat and fortune smiling all along your way. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you find your love, your own true love this day. Mansions I can wish you, seven footmen all in red, and calling cards upon a silver tray. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you find your love, your own true love this day. Standing there, Gazing at you, full of the bloom of youth. Standing there, gazing at you, with a sheep's eye and a licorice tooth. Music I can wish you, merry music while you're young and wisdom when your hair has turned to grey. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you find your love, your own true love, this day. With a sheep's eye and a licorice tooth, 
and a strong arm to carry you away. So that was so very affectionately sung in the musical by Arvid Abernathy, who, for those who are well versed in the mus in Guys and Dolls, the musical, the characters, that uh, he, this was his, really his solo piece, his, his only piece, his kind of his cameo piece as Sarah Brown's grandfather in the musical Guys and Dolls. And now onward to our next soliloquy piece sung by Sky Masterson. Another, another beloved piece. This one's a shorty and a sweetie. <clears throat> My time of day is the dark time. A couple of deals before dawn. When the street belongs to the cop and the janitor with the mop. And the grocery clerks are all gone When the smell of the rainwashed pavement Comes up clean and fresh and cold And the street lamp light Fills the gutter with gold That's my time of day time of day and you're the only doll I've ever wanted to share it with me with me so a shorty and a sweetie but really just unforgettable so those two were courtesy or are are keep keep keeping the musical very much alive and thriving are from Frank Lesser's Guys and Dolls. So <clears throat> now we are fast forwarding a couple of I guess we could say a, a couple of compositional decades to the latter 1960s to uh, the Stephen Schwartz era, the era of the, really of the even more identifiable musical, Pippin. When you are as old as I, my dear, and I hope that you never are, you will woefully wonder why, my dear, through your cataracts and catar, you could squander away or sequester a drop of a precious year. For when your best days are yester, the rest are twice as dear. What good is a field on a fine summer night when you sit all alone with the weeds? Or a succulent pear if with each juicy bite you spit out your teeth with the seeds? Before it's too late, stop trying to wait for fortune and fame you're secure of. For there's one thing to be sure of, mate. There's nothing to be sure of. Oh, it's time to start living. Time to take a little from this world we're given. Time to take time, cause spring will turn to fall in just no time at all. I 
I've never wondered if I was afraid when there was a challenge to take. I never thought about how much I weighed when there was still one piece of cake. Maybe it's meant the hours I've spent feeling broken and bent and unwell. But there's still no cure more heaven sent as the chance to raise some hell. Oh, it's time to start living. Time to take a little from this world we're given. Time to take time, cause spring will turn to fall in just no time at all. Sages tweet that age is sweet. Good deeds and good work earn your laurels. But what can make you feel more obsolete than being noted for your morals? Give me a man who is handsome and strong, someone who's stalwart and steady. Give me a night that's romantic and long, and give me a month to get ready. Now I could waylay some aging Rue and persuade him to play in some cranny. But it's hard to believe I'm being led astray by a man who calls me Granny. Oh, it's time to start living. Time to take a little from this world we're given. Time to take time, cause spring will turn to fall. In just no time at all. So when the drearies do attack and the siege of the sads begins, I throw these regal shoulders back and lift these noble chins. Here is a secret I never have told. Maybe you'll understand why. I believe if I refuse to grow old, I can stay young till I die. Now I've known the fears of 66 years, I've had troubles and tears by the score. But the only thing I trade them for is 67 more. Oh, it's time to start living, time to take a little from this world we're given. Time to take time, cause spring will turn to fall. Makes me feel young all over in just no time at all. No time at all. So that's chanted by the, well, what's really, what's really kind of scintillating is that when Stephen Schwartz composed the musical back back in the, the latter 60s, early 70s, uh, the bunny ears, the grandmotherly role is very semantic, a lot of semanticisms to that, because 66 nowadays, while, of course, you can embody the role of a grandmother at 66, a 56, 46, but her, uh, her original portrayal was kind of more, just more, I guess, geriatric, when nowadays the average 66-year-old is not so geriatric, so it's fascinating. But none the, nevertheless, the grandmotherly enchantment that we just heard from Pippin, no time at all. So onward to our next melody. I, I thought, hey, let's let's uh, keep with the continuity of Pippin, and here is a, another beloved encore from Pippin. That's actually that's literally professed by Pippin himself, Pippin the Prince.
Everything has its season, everything has its time. Show me a reason and I'll soon show you a rhyme. Cats fit on the windowsill, children fit in the snow. Why do I feel I don't fit in anywhere I go? Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free. Gotta find my corner of the sky. Every man has his daydreams, every man has his goal. People like the way dreams have of sticking to the soul. Thunderclouds have their lightning, nightingales have their song. And don't you see I want my life to be something more than long. Rivers belong where they can ramble. Eagles belong where they can fly. I've got to be where my spirit can run free gonna find my corner of the sky so many men seem destined to settle for something small but i won't rest until i know i'll have it all so don't ask where i'm going just listen when I'm gone And far away you'll hear me singing softly to the dawn Rivers belong where they can ramble Eagles belong where they can fly I've got to be where my spirit can run free Gonna find my corner the sky courtesy of prince pippin Pippin the pin P prippin pippin the prince so we have a just a couple more selections and then as always for our closing time we i, I will share some really scintillating factoids from the Broadway stage. So we have a couple more and then that'll forward us to the trivia. So the next selection is uh, back to ballads. We can never expunge the ballads, right? So this is another encore from our previous sessions previous programs. Is it the wind over my shoulder? Is it the wind that I hear gently whispering? Are you alone there in the valley? No, not alone, for you walk, you walk with me. Is it the wind there over my shoulder? Is it your voice calling quietly over the hilltop, down in the valley? 
never alone for you walk with me when evening falls and the air gets colder when shadows cover the road i am following will i be alone There in the darkness No, not alone, not alone And I'll never be Never alone You are walking, you're walking with me Is it the wind there over my shoulder? Is it your voice calling quietly over the hilltop, down in the valley? Never alone, for you walk with me over the hilltop, down in the valley. Never alone, for you walk with me. Never alone for you walk with me. You walk with me. Also courtesy of the Full Monty soundtrack and just also another really breathtaking ballad. Always very cheered to sing it for you all. And for our, our finale piece, this is also a shorty and a sweetie, but it's really such a poignant piece from Les Mis. So we are a re re chanting les mis here we go it's a, it's a it's a real shorty but it's it's oh so enchanting this is sung by cosette there is a castle on a cloud i like to go there in my sleep Aren't any floors for me to sweep? Not in my castle on a cloud. There is a room that's full of toys. There are a hundred boys and girls. Nobody shouts or talks too loud. Not in my castle on a cloud. There is a lady all in white, holds me and sings a lullaby. She's nice to see and she's soft to touch. She says, Cosette, I love you very much. I know a place where no one's lost. I know a place where no one cries. Crying at all is not allowed. Not in my castle on a cloud. Castle on a cloud? Les Mis. Les Mis is also a, a just a, a very, very influential musical for really for Broadway buffs and and history buffs, devotees all around. So I would love to close with some Broadway. I have a carousel, pun intended, Broadway. This is more so actually Broadway fact than an actual 
a questionnaire. So I'll, uh, yeah, I'll just share what we have here for, for you all. So we have benchmark musicals in Broadway history. What is it about Broadway musicals that we love and just adore so much? What keeps us coming back for more? What entices us to get lost in a world of song, dance, escapism, and heightened emotion? So many musicals have resonated with audiences in the roughly 150 years since the Broadway musical became one of New York City's most popular forms of entertainment and icons of entertainment. So here we have 20 benchmark musicals in Broadway history and I'm sure, I mean, there's dozens upon dozens more, but here are 20 that we can uh, reflect and reminisce and nostalgic upon. So the first being Showboat, composed in 1927 with music by Jerome Kern and lyricist uh, Oscar Hammer Hammerstein and P.G. Wodehouse. And Showboat marks musical theater's first serious step toward maturation and evolution. It featured an early stab at the integrated musical where the music and lyrics grew out of the plot, themes, and characters. So the, the plot, themes, and character, that trifecta was really, that was the preamble to really the, the rest of, uh, of Rodgers and Hammerstein's musical scores and resume for sure and we have i'll go through the i'll go through the roster just to uh so i don't sponge up too much time so of the and then we have of the i sing 1931 musical george and ira gershwin composers and scorists scribists and we have porgy and bess and uh, it really is a an opera is an operetta is it a musical whatever the listeners are comfortable with i'd say it could pass as both because in fact it has been performed on the operatic stage the metropolitan opera actually uh, performed this really i would say bi-yearly and it was actually performed quite recently in recent months and but it's also constitutes as a musical as well also composed in 1935 music by george gershwin lyrics by ira gershwin oklahoma composed in 1943 r and h rogers and hammerstein richard rogers oscar hammerstein first collaborated on a musical version of actually it was primitively a play Green Grow the Lilacs, and then it was adapted to the musical stage, which resulted in Oklahoma, and dubbed as Oklahoma. And it really, it really became the template for musical theater for decades to this recent decade. Finian's Rainbow, 1947, composed. The E.Y. Harburg and Fred Sadie book deals with topics that were controversial for their time but maybe not so so controversial now, really more so top, topically topical than topically controversial. Kiss Me Kate, composed in 1948. In terms of evolving musical theater, it really evolved as an art form, art format. Masterfully constructed, complex musical comedy, and it's also a show within a show. So for those of you who've seen actually this is really my all-time favorite farcical uh really parody and parado paradoxical musical play noises off that's also a play within a play and west side story 1957 composed by none other than so jerome robbins he really, well, really, it, it really to who holds responsibility for the music is Jerome Robbins and also Leonard Bernstein for the compo composition. And then we mustn't exclude Stephen Sondheim, who supplied those 
romanticized lyrics. Just, oh, lub dub. Fiddler on the Roof, that's another benchmark musical we, we would love to honor today. And also composed in 1964. And it crafted the musical version of, for those who maybe didn't know this or that warmly reminded of this, of Sholem Aleichem's tale, Tevya and his daughters. So also yet another adaptation. Cabaret, Candor and Ebb, sounds like a, a sounds like a, a musical theater law firm. And uh, Cabaret, really a boutique musical, but really also very revolutionary. And also actually company revolutionary. So not only did company launch a decade long partnership between Sondheim and Harold Prince, who directed company, but the 1970s, so already we're sounding more and more recent contemporary, it opened the door for a new way of musical theater storytelling. So essentially Sondheim, he conceptualized the concept musical, which explores a theme rather than a linear chronological story. So yeah, Sondheim is very much, yeah, he's very much revered for this, that he's more of a non sequitur storyteller in all of his musicals, but that's really what, what makes him lovable uh, so much so. And then we also have the musical Hair, 1968 composed. Hair was actually, is classified as a rock musical, though Bye Bye Birdie hinted at the possibilities of the genre for storytelling in 1960, but hair was a cultural phenomenon for sure in, in every really societal issue at the time. Then we have a chorus line. Chorus line just absolutely wonderful and very infectious musical. Marvin Hamlish, of course. Then we have La Ca oh yes, La Cage, La Cage Foles, absolutely. Francais, La Cage Foles, Anglais, The Birdcage. So actually for those of you who haven't seen The Birdcage, with Nathan Lane and Robin Williams, the cinematic birdcage. Oh, it's a must see because it really, it, it was very much based on, on the film. And then we have The Phantom of the Opera. It's another benchmark musical and The Secret Garden as well. It was a little bit more so short lived, but it was still a uh, very, very much celebrated. 1991 it was composed and then to close to um to, well i guess we could say to fine the benchmarks we have rent and in the heights and hamilton so those three are are more of the contemporaries but really also very much revered rent was composed in 1996 by composer Jonathan Larson. It really was, it really was partially autobiographical. And In the Heights as well, composer Lin-Manuel Miranda, who granted us Hamilton. And actually, for those who are tuning in in June, the, the musical will actually be adapted to for our eyes to see it on the Disney Plus platform. So more, I'll disclose more details next Thursday. But any any whoosies, any housies, thank you so kindly for tuning in and for your ears, your thoughtful ears. And as always, it's so lovely to spend this precious time with you and to cheer up your afternoons and 
as a sweet reminder, uh, as far as our cognitive virtual programming is concerned, we are so blessed to continue this continuity for you tomorrow, Friday, 10.30 a.m., 12.30 p.m., 2 o'clock p.m., right? And Saturday, same time intervals, and then skip Sunday for God's Day, and then we continue trickling into next week. So for, for three intervals, six days a week, and looking very much forward to seeing you next Thursday at 2 p.m., and thanks a bunch again. I wish everyone a very peaceful and very uneventful rest of the week and into next week.